Welcome in, everybody. Tonight, we're going to be talking about, really, are you a worrier or are you a warrior? Are you Do you worry more or are you ready to get out there and fight the good fight? And tonight, we're really going to be coming out of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Neither They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. The word of the Lord this evening. So in our text we find the word worry six times here. We find the word worry six times in this passage, and Jesus is hes really trying to constantly remind us in this passage that we have no reason to worry. He tells us not to worry about today. He tells us not to worry about yesterday, and he's telling us to stop worrying about tomorrow. All these things will take care of themselves. And I want to ask you the question tonight, are you a worrier or are you a warrior? And we're going to talk a little bit more about this as we go on tonight. But I want to break down some stats for you. You guys know I love stats. And researchers have found that 40% of things we worry about never happens. 30% of them are in the past and they can't be helped. 12% of our worry involves the affairs of others and are not ever our business to begin with. 10% of them relates to sickness, real or imagined. That leaves only 8%. 8%. That is so minuscule in, in the eyesight here. It leaves 8% of things we worry about that are even likely to happen. The Wall Street Journal published an article about the worry gene. Scientists have discovered that research scientists from Yale have identified a worry gene that may contribute to chronic worry. It's a gene inherited from one's parents. 
Yet even these researchers conclude that having inherited a worry gene does not mean you cannot overcome worry. The fact is, is that you don't have to live with anxiety and worry. You don't have to live with what people are saying you have. You see, worry is like a low-grade fear. Worry is a low-grade fear, but it's interest paid on a trouble before it comes. So you're so focused on this trouble before it even arrives that now you are stuck in as a worry wart, right? You're stuck in this situation to where you're worrying about what's going to happen instead of proclaiming what can happen. In most cases, according to statistics, what we worry about doesn't happen. The trouble that we stew over just never comes to pass. And how do I become a warrior and not a worrier? How do I step into being a warrior rather than being a worrier? So I'm going to break this down and give you guys a couple steps tonight on how to step out of being a worrier and into a warrior. And the first one is stop all the commotion. You have to stop all the commotion that's around you, in you, or about you. There's a story in the Bible that I have shared on numerous occasions with, with people that have been following me for a while, but I want to touch on this story one more time tonight to help this point become a little bit clearer. There was a man named Jarius, and Jarius was a synagogue official, and he came and fell at the feet of Jesus, begging him to come and pray for his daughter, who was very sick. So Jesus started towards his home, but while they were on their way, Jairus the servant came and told him his daughter had just died, and they told him not to bother the master any longer. It's too late, right? So Jesus, he hears the servant, and he turns to the desperate father and says, and if you want to see this story, it's in Mark chapter 5, but he says in Mark chapter 5, verse 36, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Only believe. You see, Jesus was saying to the ruler, don't be a worrier. Be a warrior. If you only believe what I say and you don't believe the circumstance that you're in, if you only believe what I have spoken and you don't look at the circumstance at hand, he says, only believe in me, not in the report. Not in the report. Don't allow fearfulness and worry into your life. Because if you allow worry or fear in, I can't do anything for you. This is what Jesus is telling this servant. He says, if you allow this report to take place, if you allow this report to overwhelm what I'm fixing to tell you, if you believe that report over the report that I'm going to give you, there's nothing I can do for you. You see, you have to be in warrior mode. You have to be in warrior mode, not worry mode, if you want results. We don't see any signs of worry in Jarius' life. See, we see in the story that when they arrived at the house, everyone was weeping and wailing. Jesus says in Mark 5, verse 39, he says, why all this commotion and wailing? Why is all this turmoil going on in this house? Why are you guys all wailing and, and, and crying your eyes out and have all this commotion? He says, the child, the child is not dead. She's just sleeping. Jesus was actually saying, you're getting yourselves all worked up about nothing. And a lot of us, we read this story and we're like, well, how could Jesus really say that? How could Jesus say that, that I'm getting myself all worked up for nothing? See, this girl in their mind is dead. The, 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 this girl in the mind of the people in the house, is, she's dead. She's no longer with us. And, and he gets all upset at them because they're getting so worked up about nothing. And he says, she's just sleeping. She's just sleeping. To Jesus, they are worrying about nothing. He, he actually gets so mad at them that he kicked them all out of the house. He got so worked up 
because they brought such commotion into the house that he kicked them all out. Sometimes you got to kick people out of your house in order to clean it out. Sometimes you got to kick people out of your life in order to be walking in that righteous path. Sometimes you got to kick people out of your life so that you don't have the commotion that they're bringing in. See, he couldn't have all the commotion going on if he was going to go going to work his miraculous power. You see, after, after everyone clears the room, he takes the girl by the hand and tells her to get up. And she wakes up and rises to everyone's amazement. When I read about this miracle, as I have so many times, I begin to realize that Satan tries to get us to focus on our problems and make a great deal of it. You see, because the problem then becomes greater in our minds than the power of Jesus. See, to the enemy's approval, we make a great commotion over nothing. Some people's going to argue that this experience is not a nothing, but you can't argue with Jesus. In his mind, it is no greater to raise a girl from the dead than to raise her from a night's sleep. I know a lot of you are facing insurmountable obstacles in your life right now. You're facing obstacles that you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're facing obstacles where it feels like the world is crashing down on you. You're facing obstacles that feel like there's no escape, like you're trapped, like you have been weighed down by the world and you can't get out. But Jesus is trying to get your attention and let you know that your problem is no big deal to him. That doesn't mean that he doesn't care. That just means that he's able to take care of it if you would give it to him. He's saying the problem may look too big for you, but it's not too big for me. He's telling you that the problem may look like it's defeated you, but that problem's not going to defeat me. He says, if you just give me that problem, if you just give me that situation, if you just give me that issue, I'm willing to take it. But are you willing to lay it down? Are you willing to walk away from it? He's telling you, stop all the commotion. Stop getting yourselves worked up over these problems that you're facing and start looking to God of the impossibilities instead of the problem. Stop all the commotion. If you really want to be a warrior, you have to learn to lean on the everlasting arms of the Savior. See, a warrior takes matters into his own hands, therefore he worries about it. But a warrior takes matters and puts them into God's hands. Therefore, he doesn't have to worry about it because they know that God has it all under control. God's definition of warrior and the world's definition of warrior are entirely different. So are you going to be a warrior? Or are you going to be a warrior? We have to decide to become a warrior and not a worrier. So in order to be a warrior, we must stop all the commotion. We must also realize that God specializes in unequal fights. God specializes in fights where it looks like we've been defeated. God specializes in fights where it looks like the battle's already won. God specializes in an area of life that we can't comprehend with our carnal mind. I want to look at a number of Old Testament stories to prove to you that God specializes in unequal fights. You see, because the world's definition of warrior is to go out into battle, well-trained in military strategy. But God's definition, God's definition of warrior is to be obedient to whatever God tells you to do. See, a lot of times we try to put it into our own hands. We try to put the fight into our own hands like we can defeat it. But God says all you got to do is turn it over to me and be obedient to what I say. 
If you look at 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 20 through 22, it says, Benaiah, son of Jehoda, was a valiant fighter from Kabzeel who performed great exploits. He struck down two of Moab's best men. He also went down into a pit on snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down a huge Egyptian. Although the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoda. He too was as famous as the three mighty men. See, Benaiah was one of David's mighty men. You'll notice in the scripture that we just read that Benaiah jumped in a pit with a lion and killed him. But the Bible makes mention on purpose that Benaiah jumped into the pit on a snowy day and did this. It's one thing to kill a lion as David did, but Benaiah killed him with ice and snow under his feet. In the midst of fear, Benaiah had courage to take on this lion and go and steal a spear from the enemy and kill the enemy too. I can just picture this Benaiah as a warrior. Why? It was only because God was with him that it that 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 is what made him the warrior that he was. It was an unequal fight. But it didn't matter to Benaiah because he knew that the Lord was with him. That was 2 Samuel 23 verses 20 through 22. You see knowing that God specializes in unequal fights really should give you courage. That means when you're up against something you cannot win, that we need to remember that God specializes in unequal fights. Courage is doing what you were afraid to do. Courage is standing in the face of fear and worrying and, and worry and doing it anyways. It is not the absence of fear, but it is taking action in spite of that fear. The great author Mark Twain said, courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence of fear. It is the mastery of fear. You see, God needs some men and women in the troubled times to have the courage to say, God said to do it and I'm going to do it. See, God's calling for the saints to rise up right now that when he says to go, you go. You don't ask questions. You don't becker with him. You don't bicker with him. He says, go, you go. God tells you to speak, you speak. He's looking for the warriors right now to lift up, to build up, to build this army of the Lord. He wants you to go do it even if you have to get into knee-deep snow and fight a lion. And what you're going to say is you're going to say, bring it on because I'm not going to retreat in fear because I know what God told me. I will not worry because I know what God's word says about my life and the things that I'm facing. Therefore, I make a decision. No fear here. Some of you might be at a crossroads in your life right now. You might be in a crossroad in your life right now where God has told you to do a hard thing. Let me encourage you to take courage and stare fear in the face like a warrior and do exactly what God has told you to do. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. If you're here tonight and you're sick in your body, I encourage you today to stare fear and worry in the face like a warrior and say, I will not worry about this sickness because his word says by his stripes, I am healed. If you're here and you have financial need to big for you to handle, I encourage you today to stare worry in the face like a warrior and declare, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and his glory. If you're here and you are living in all kinds of commotion and chaos, I encourage you today to stare worry in the face like a warrior and declare, I shall have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding if you are here tonight 
and you have sin in your life, I encourage you to stare fear and worry in the face like a warrior and declare Jesus has made me more than a conqueror. Through him, he has helped me to overcome the world. We have to remember that God is known for putting people in unequal fights. And he's known to do that because that is his specialty. He wants you to come through your fight victorious and giving glory to him. He likes to put you into fights that are unequal because if they were equal, you would receive some of the glory. You would try to share some of that glory. That is not the way he works. He doesn't share the glory with anyone. He wants you to fully rely on him. He wants you to know that the only way that you got out is through his mercy, through his grace, through his healing. He, he wants you to know right now that it's his glory that will shine when he places you in to that unequal fight give him praise see there's nothing equal about the children of Israel marching around the huge walls of Jericho as a war strategy yet that's exactly what they did there's nothing equal about Gideon going into war with just 300 men against thousands yet that is what he did and won why because God specializes in unequal fights God wants the glory for your every victory hallelujah he wants to receive the glory for your victories. There's nothing equal about a little boy named David going onto a battlefield with a giant called Goliath and killing him with one stone. Yet that is what he did and won. You see, God specializes in unique unequal fights they they knew that their nothingness plus god's almightiness equals giants falling down it equals walls falling down it equals armies ambushing themselves it represents victory in every battle he knew that his glory would be the resurrection the life he knew that he they knew that he they blah, they knew that he wanted them to fight, so he did as just as God had directed and told them. Are you able to say that tonight? Or are you still saying I'm a warrior and not a warrior? Are you allowing God to be the master of your life? What are you facing right now that seems impossible to overcome? Just keep in mind, God wants you to stop making all the commotion about your problems and start trusting in him. You see, a real warrior doesn't take matters in his own hands. He gives them to Jesus. See, a real warrior doesn't try to put the battle in his own hands. He puts it in the hands of Jesus. Some of you need to stop looking at your circumstances and your problems and start looking to the author and the finisher of your faith. Some of you need to stop looking at what it looks like the world has done to you and start looking at the author and the finisher of your faith. We also have to remember we also have to remember that God specializes in unequal fights. Even when you're facing insurmountable odds, rise up in courage and begin to declare, I will not worry. I will not fear. If God tells me to go, I'm going to go. If God tells me to speak, I'm going to speak. If God tells me to be directed into a path that looks like it's a path of nowhere, I'm going to walk because I know that God directs the path of my feet. I know he directs the footsteps of my feet. I know that he's leading me into victory. He's not leading me into something that he hasn't already prepared. I know that my God goes before me. I know that my God stands behind me. I know that my God 
God is on my left flank. He's on my right flank. I know that when I go into battle, it's no longer just I, but it's him. And when he's in the midst, when he's present, all enemies shall fall because greater is he that is in me than who he is who in the, who is in the world see we have to step out of the fear we have to step out of the worry we have to step out of our consequences we have to step out of our circumstances we got to step out of these storms and say but my god my god my god is the greatest my god goes before me and i know that nothing can stand against me i know that i can walk in the fiery furnace I know that my God can. I know that I can go into the lion's den because I know my God can. I know that I can part the Red Sea because I know my God can. See, as we begin to trust the Lord, as we begin to move in the Lord, we shift from worry to warrior. We shift from fear to victory. We shift from discouragement to encouragement. We begin to shift because it's no longer I that's doing it but it's the spirit of God inside of me somebody give him praise tonight even when you're facing insurmountable odds rise up in courage and begin to declare I will not worry I will not fear are you a worrier or are you a warrior?